The math is in. Dr. Ratio might be the best single target DPS in the game. It is saying that Zila is a 335,000 DPS single target at E0. Now the issue with her, the harder the content gets, the worse she gets. A lot of her value in the kit is getting an extra turn. And when you get that extra turn, you're doing like 80% more damage. And if you can't kill trash mobs, or if it's just one big boss, half of her kit is not coming online and bringing any value. But when you compare it to Dr. Ratio, his calculations are coming in at 688,000. Double. Two times the amount of damage. There's gonna be two very important things that are glossed over by basically everyone who looks at Pridwin calculations in my experience. So I wanna know as we go through this, if you can see them and if you do, leave it down below. And don't worry, I'll explain it when we're done. And I don't wanna take things entirely out of context, so I'm provide you the full context. Well, well, well. The math is in and things are looking really good for Dr. Ratio. All right, let's, let's have- I think, what was that? I made a whole video talking about Dr. Ratio because I was excited. I was like, damn, this guy feels pretty cool. You can test run him right now in game and you can go through yeah. all of his traces, the entire kit, and it's he true. looked good. He felt good. I saw a lot of potential here. And he has got a, a lot post talking about Ton. Dr. Ratio and comparing oh, no, no, to some of these other units and saying Dr. Ratio might be the best single target DPS in the game. It's it's true. Also, this is this is the problem with people just looking at numbers. And this is nothing against Pridwin, but looking at numbers and disregarding the explanation about how those numbers were achieved. All right. Well, hold on. I, I, I'll just let you finish. All right. Nightfall. Now, I want to chat about that. So if you look at this chart here, this is the calculations on Pridewin. Okay. It is saying that Zila is a 335,000 DPS single target at E0. All right? It's true. And this is calculated based on using the Genius set, using the Ritalan set, and uh, crit damage body, attack boots, yada, yada, yada. Okay? Now, the issue with her is the harder the content gets, the worse she gets. Because sometimes a lot yes. of her value in the kit is getting an extra turn. Mm -hmm. And when you get that extra turn, you're doing like 80% more damage. So arguably more. Uh, that's a lot of value to get. And if you can't Overall, kill trash we'll mobs, there. or if it's just one big boss, honestly, half of her kit is not coming online and bringing any value. Okay? And so I can see that number and I'm like, yeah, that, that probably makes sense. But when you compare it to Dr. Ratio, <sighs> his calculation. Uh, did you see the part that I'm talking about where we're disregarding the explanations? I'm not trying the dog. I'm excited about Dr. Ratio too. He's really, listen, he's really good. He's really strong. He's really strong, but we definitely missed something there. Okay. Well, we missed something big. We'll probably miss something else. At 688,000. Yes. Okay. Huge. Double. Double. Against single target. Big. And this is based on using a, a mix set of the messenger set for speed and the ash blazing grand duke, which can mm -hmm. follow up damage. Mm -hmm. But hypothetically, you could use something like the bandit set and, and potentially do more damage. So this is crazy to me that you're doing two times the amount of damage. Now, the one thing I want to say about this is... Okay. I believe it. Oh! With Zila, if the enemies aren't dying, she doesn't pop off. In the case of him, he's almost always popping off, especially against bosses and and, and the tougher content. Mm -hmm. This number is probably very accurate because you can place a couple debuffs and all of a sudden yep. he's doing a follow-up every single time he uses his skill. And if you can feed any <laughs> sort of energy into him with Ting Yun or even just stuff like- Outside like external buffs, universe, yeah. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he's also gonna follow up when his teammates are attacking. Hitting constantly for crit damage, and I just see so much potential in this character. He's got a lot of potential. Uh, might be OP, and I like it for free. <laughs> so did you see those two things? I can't really drag this video out any longer. I can. And technically, there's actually three. Pridwin has a very basic system because it's the most fair system when calculating the EPS for a character in Honkai Star Rail. And that is the solo DPS ranking system and involves 
just that character. It's not a team oriented combat simulator. It doesn't have or factor in character buffs like King Yoon in your party or Yukong or Asta or anyone you could be using that could buff up that character. It's supposed to strictly be just that character's abilities in their rotation with their skill point usage. So when we look at the Zayla E0 damage number and we see 335,000 and we talk about how she can lose part of her kit without procking her ability resurgence to take extra turns, this disclaimer is a very important. Sayla's reset mechanic is not included in her calculation. So when we look at this number and start comparing her to other characters like Dr. Ratio, whose spoiler is gonna have his own disclaimer and we'll talk about why that matters so much. And it could perhaps matter so much that the solo DPS ranking charts are now gone off Pridwin. We can get a much more fair of an understanding about how certain characters actually work in Honkai Star Rail, not just with sheet damage calculations off Pridwin. And I'm not here to dog on Pridwin calcs, they are accurate within the constraints that they provide. That is also why they have disclaimers for certain characters, such as Sayla's reset mechanic, not being included in the calculations, because how do you actually calculate something like that fairly? You can't really calculate something like that fairly. Are you going to use a basic skill or are you going to use a actual skill on your reset turn? How many resets are you gonna get? Five resets, four resets, three resets? Do you get enough resets and extra skill point usages to gain a bunch of extra damage to the point where you can gain another ultimate ability? Do you have Ting Yun in your party? Do you have someone like Yu Kong in your party? Because remember, activating your ultimate or even your resurgence turns on a Sela allows you to extend the durations of buffs basically for free. So those giant crit chance, crit damage and attack buffs, or the, even something as simple as the Ting Yun buff that goes down every time a character takes a turn who has the buff, doesn't actually decrease with Zayla. And if you were to try to calculate that, you would end up in a in near infinite amount of possibilities. Cause even if you're like with three resets, you can do this. But if you have three resets, do you use three basics? Do you use three skills? Are you using 15 skill points? Or are you using nine skill points? Cause you actually generate three more. Are you generating enough ultimate gauge to use another ultimate? So you can gain access to another turn with an extra resurgence buff and your Ting Yun buffs are still activating. Your Yukong buffs are still activating. Whatever buffs you're using are still activating. You're hitting a deep DPS debuff target with defense down from Silver Wolf. Who knows? So the most fair way that Pridwin can calculate damage for characters, especially someone like Zayla, is to have the disclaimer where he reset mechanic is not included in her calculations at all. Meaning that this 335,928 damage number is the absolute floor is what we'll call it the absolute minimum that you can expect within these constraints. However, with something as simple as one reset, you can gain hundreds of thousands of damage in the right circumstances with the right teammates. And I'm bringing up teammates because we talked about in this video, the ability for you to do cool stuff with Dr. Ratio and teammates. And also there's a disclaimer for Dr. Ratio himself. Disclaimer for Dr. Ratio, the calculations assume you are hitting a debuffed target to activate the crit rate and crit damage trace. So you need to pair Dr. Ratio with someone who can provide the debuffs as he literally cannot do it by himself. So this is a little unfair of a comparison because for most, I think almost every other character in the DPS calculation simulations that Pridwin runs, they are based entirely off of their own abilities. No external buffs, no external debuffs, no other characters in your party. That is why they have the party simulated DPS stuff that you can go ahead and mess around with at your own leisure. And so the big takeaway from this is when you see Dr. Ratio, let's get this out of the way as well. Yeah, he's really, really, really strong. I'm not trying to say he's bad and Zayla's better, but what I'm trying to say is that we need to look at these disclaimers and understand what these disclaimers mean. So let me break that down for you. When we look at someone like Dr. Ratio with the 688,000 damage number in the Disclaimer says you have to keep in mind that you are always 100% of the time hitting a debuff target and you have to have someone else in your party to utilize this ability for bonus crit rate, crit damage, and his follow-up attack off of debuff targets. That is a big 
takeaway for you to think about what that might mean. For Dr. Ratio, this means that unlike Zayla, who Zayla was at the floor for her damage and she can go much higher in these simulations, Dr. Ratio is near the ceiling. Right. If we run into a boss who has the ability to cleanse themselves or a boss who has multiple phases and their HP bar resets and all their debuffs get wiped away, you're not going to be 100 percent of the time getting that extra damage from your doctor ratio, meaning that the number that you see here will actually be lower in real life gameplay, whereas someone like Zayla has the ability to grow because her numbers are from the floor. You can go up. Ratio is kind of at the ceiling and can go down a little bit, meaning that no, he's not always going to be doing double the damage of Sela in every circumstance. And this is a pretty big deal when we're talking about Dr. Ratio, because unlike all the other characters in Pridwin, he's being calculated with a party member slot being taken up strictly to activate his abilities and his traces, which is fine. You're going to be doing that. I understand that, but it's a little unfair because all of the other characters are being calculated without the ability for someone to be buffing them up. And this is a pretty big deal because assuming that you're going to have someone to buff ratio up is, a, my opinion, a 100% fair assumption. You're not gonna put Dr. Ratio in a party without someone that's gonna be able to activate his trace. So you might say, oh, well then what are you talking about? Why does it matter? Well, it matters when we're comparing a character who has the ability for someone to activate parts of their kit in other characters, not just Sayla, but other characters in the DPS solo rankings that don't have that ability. They don't have the ability to include another character to activate certain parts of their kit. There's an opportunity cost for Dr. Ratio utilizing one of your four slots of party members to help him out and activate his traces. So if you're using a Nihility character to activate your ratio, that's gonna be one less party member slot that you can use on a Harmony character. And that opportunity cost being that party member slot. Using a Nihility character to activate Dr. Ratio or some other character with enough buffs to activate your Dr. Ratio's talents and abilities traces is the opportunity cost for Dr. Ratio. And so when you have that kind of for free thrown into his DPS simulation calculations, his numbers are gonna be slightly inflated compared to other characters because that one party member slot for other characters could be a Harmony character. It could be the Ting Yun or the Yukong or the Asta that you could have in your party for attack buffs or crit damage buffs or crit chance buffs or just more energy gain. But those characters, the non-Doctor Ratio characters, the Zaylas and the Jing Wongs of the world out there, you're gonna have a Harmony character or maybe even two possibly in your party. So to compare Doctor Ratio with someone in your party and every other character in the game with no one in your party is a little unfair as far as it comes to Pridwin's calculations, which like I said previously, may or may not be why they're gone now. And I get it, I'm hyped. Dr. Rachel's really, really strong, but I don't want another Jing Wong situation where he comes out in the simulation say, oh my goodness, he's so much better than Zayla in single target situations. And people go out and they pull for multiple Eidolons for him, they use him, they go, I had a really crack Zayla though and he seems to be doing worse when I actually play with him. And I've been sick and out of Star Rail recently, but I saw this and wanted to take this as an opportunity to use this as a PSA, not for someone else's channel or start drama or anything like that. Tashman, bless your brother out there. But for Pridwin, I have gotten so many comments about why things don't work the way they do and calculations and all this other stuff. And I wanted to make this a PSA about it's very important when someone shows you DPS simulations and they say, I did all of this work. My man over at Pridwin, a lot of work to go into these calculations. You have to, you have to read everything, read the very important disclaimers for certain characters. And then you as a player, look at the numbers, read the disclaimers and try to understand what that is going to mean for you as a player when you play the game. Someone like Sayla, who has very low damage numbers, has a lot of potential and exponential room for growth just off of a simple reset, or even has more potential for growth when compared to the numbers that we see for someone like Dr. Ratio, because you might be able to fit an extra Harmony character into your party in your Zayla team, whereas Dr. Ratio might need an extra Nihility character to make sure that, as the disclaimer says, always has enough debuffs on anything he is attacking 
or someone else is attacking to proc all of his traces for the free damage. Anytime that you run into a situation like we talked about with a boss that can cleanse themselves or has multiple phases and the debuffs fall off and your skill point usage might plummet because you need to use skill points on your other nihility characters to put those debuffs back up so you can gain that full utilization of ratio again. All of those things you have to keep in mind when you're looking at these sheet DPS numbers. Sheet DPS numbers do not always 100% and probably will never 100% accurately represent what is going on in real world combat play. And it's not to attack Priduin because like I said earlier, they lay it all out for you. You just, a lot of people just don't read for some reason. Cause like I said before a million times, you could have it in big, 4,000 font, highlighted colors, rainbow font, neon signs around it, and you will still have the vast majority of people who come to your site or watch your content or read or listen to whatever it is you're saying, miss out on the most integral and important parts of what you're trying to get across. And it happens a lot of the time with sheet DPS calculations, people don't look at the constraints and they don't look at the disclaimers. And so they just look at the numbers and come off with a very not accurate, we'll call it that way, a not entirely accurate description of what those numbers could possibly mean. Sorry if I sound weird, I am sick. Until then though, bless up, get your doctor ratios and I'll catch you guys in the next one.